Hello again, students. This is Dr. Mary Lynn Crow, and this is the second part of our session, Identifying Mental Health Concerns. Current Texas law, that's Texas Senate Bill 460, requires that teachers have training in the detection of students with mental or emotional or behavioral disorders. This part of our work together will identify those characteristics and behaviors that will allow you to detect students with mental or emotional or behavioral disorders. This is important, students. In no circumstances, in no circumstances should teachers attempt to make diagnoses or to label a child. Your job is to confidentially report this information to school authorities. Often that would be the school counselor. The following characteristics and behaviors that I'm going to share with you are especially significant if they are repetitive or constitute a pattern. But you are being trusted with this information to know that you will not attempt to look at the data that you are being provided and make a diagnosis. You can always list behaviors, but do not make a diagnosis. I'm going to start with a list of characteristics and behaviors that you may notice in some students and these behaviors and characteristics may indicate the possible presence of a mental health condition. The possible presence of a mental health condition. I think maybe the first one is more important than anything else on the list. Sudden unexplained changes in a student's traditional mood or behavior. In young children, serious difficulty separating from a family member or caretaker, worrying that this person will get hurt or go away. Again in young children, pronounced interest in sexuality or behaving in a sexually inappropriate way for one's age. Slurring speech, incoordination, unsteady gait, flushed face, dilated eyes, perspiration or chills, depressed mood or sadness, irritability, lack of energy or motivation, feeling hopeless. And again, talking about death or suicide, particularly if a friend has recently died or committed suicide. Giving away favorite possessions and coming to say goodbye. Telling anyone that he or she is considering suicide, whether or not you believe them, whether or not you think they're just trying to get attention. I want to share something with you that's not on the list because I am a counselor educator. In 1991, in the state of Maryland, there is a case law called ISIL versus the Board of Education. In this situation, a student went to the school counselor and said, my friend says she's going to kill herself. The counselor called that girl into the office and said, This is what I heard. Is that true? And the girl said, No, it's not. The girl then went out and she did kill herself. I'm telling you this because the counselor did not do anything about it. She took the child's word that she wasn't going to do anything. And the school counselor was held liable for the student's suicide. It doesn't matter whether you believe the child or not. If you think there is an issue, you have to do something about it. 
excessive anxiety, constantly worrying that something bad is going to happen, fears that something bad will happen again, along with memories of nightmares of something bad they can't forget, being easily startled. As I go down this list, I think some of you, particularly those of you who have experienced some of these issues with children, with school, with families, may already identify what kind of mental emotional illness this is possibly indicating. This is not secret. You can purchase a copy of the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, 5, DSM-5, and look them up yourself. But the point is not what they indicate. The point is that you are paying attention that this is taking place. Strong, unusual fears that other same-age children do not have. Fear of losing control or going crazy, along with a pounding heart, trembling, feeling dizzy. A child who flaps hands or other items, not maintaining eye contact, difficulty with communication, and interpersonal relationships. Forgetful, unable to pay attention or stay focused, difficulty finishing assignments, disorganized, constantly worrying about being fat while starving him or herself which is to say a very distorted body image, vomiting after eating, having multiple scars or cuts on arms or legs. And by the way, self-mutilation is not necessarily a sign of potential suicide, but it definitely is a danger sign that needs to be uh, reported wearing long sleeves or pants in hot months to cover bruises or wounds, exhibiting motor or vocal tics or sounds, drawing pictures, writing stories or posts on social media that violence may occur at school or other places. Once again, you don't have to decide if it's real or not your job is to be aware of it and to bring it to the attention of authorities. Extremely talkative, racing thoughts, a decreased need for sleep, inflated self-esteem and activity level. Repetitive hand washing or checking locks or counting objects that the student feels driven to do. Pulling hair out of one's head or other body parts, like eyebrows. Defying authority repeatedly. Bragging about or threatening to hurt or kill domestic animals. I think most of us know that one of the first signs that a child is in deep trouble and can cause serious consequences to others is hurting or abusing animals. Irritability, anger, repetitive temper tantrums without seemingly being sufficiently provoked. Unprovoked anger, aggression, hostility toward people and surroundings. A pattern of criminality or violence without feelings of guilt or remorse. The inability to feel empathy. Boy, is that an important one. Hearing voices or seeing things others do not see or hear. I'm now going to list two. The first list was of characteristics and behaviors that you need to be attentive to and report. They may, may indicate a mental, emotional, or behavioral disorder that needs professional attention. Now this is list two, 
And this list identifies characteristics and behaviors that may or may not warrant attention from teachers or other professionals in the school. But even if it does, it usually does not indicate a serious mental, emotional health issue. In other words, there are things that children do that irritate other students, that bother the teacher, that may break school rules, but they are not necessarily a serious mental emotional health issue. It's hard to tell the difference sometimes. One way to do it is the degree of seriousness of the behavior along with whether or not it is repetitive and a pattern. Beginning again with young children. Reluctant to leave a parent who brings him or her to school. Masturbating in class, again, young children. Sleeping in class. Laughing at the mistakes of others. Getting into an argument with another student. Being competitive. And as you see, we go down this second list. We're talking about things that falls typically within the norm for a lot of children does not necessarily mean there's a mental or emotional illness involved. Whining. Talking too much in class. Cursing or name-calling. Tattling on others. Daydreaming in class. Gossiping. Telling a lie. Excluding others from one's group or clique. Admitting he is gay or that she is a lesbian. Cries when she or he gets feelings hurt. Procrastinates. Does not like to lose or to fail. Speaks disrespectfully to an authority figure. Seeks attention from teachers or students. Poor body hygiene. Does not use eye contact with authority figures. Does not want to speak or present in front of class. Has conflicts with parents or adult caretakers. Has difficulty making friends. Is shy. Absent without an excuse. Lacks social skills. Wears unusual clothes, makeup, or hairstyles. Remember, these characteristics and behaviors may require attention, but are not necessarily an indication that they are based on mental emotional illness. You, as a teacher, can save the life of a child and sometimes even the life of others. You be the eyes and the ears. It's up to you.